Our text this morning will be coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. It's like Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to be starting at verse number 8. And I'm going to read down to verse 14. Ephesians 5, chapter 8, verse 14. And it reads in our hearing, and it says, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good, right, and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that, be, that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, O Lord. We thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. God, we come now, God, humble, asking you, O Lord, to lead us and guide us through and by the Holy Spirit. Lord, hide me behind the cross so that you and you alone will get the glory. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. As I prepare to set the stage this morning, I set it by saying that the book of Ephesians is divided into two broad sections. The first section covers chapter 1 through 3. And in chapter 1 through 3, it talks about being saved by the grace of God. Paul begins the first section by praising God for blessings in Christ. And he emphasizes that they have been made alive in Christ. The second part covers chapter 4 through 6. And in chapters 4 through 6, it talks about living a saved life, a life that is patterned after God. Paul urges his readers to live in the light of these truths, to seek unity, to use their gifts for ministry, to put away their old life and to embrace a new life that is characterized by the wisdom and the spirit of God. And so this morning, I want to focus our attention on the second part of Ephesians. And I want to talk about living in the light of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Living in the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I studied this text, as I prepared to share this text with God's people, I, the question that kept coming to my mind as I studied was this question here. It's a question that challenged me and enlightened me. That question is this. What does it mean to live in the light of Christ? Or better yet, or better yet, what does it look like to live in the light of Christ? There, in Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, we are instructed to be imitators of Christ. That's Ephesians 5, verse number 1. We are instructed to be imitators of Christ. And that's my first point this morning. My first point is that in order for us to live in the light of Christ, one must first imitate the example of Christ. And one of the things that Paul points to us is that we are to imitate God's love. Yeah. We are to be imitators of God's love. It's right there in Ephesians 5, chapter 2, I mean verse 2. Paul says, walk in love. And as believers, we are commanded, we are called to walk in love. In fact, the Bible says, love, thy Lord, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. On one hand, this text encourages us to live our lives in the light of Christ. But on the other hand, this text challenges us to examine our lives by the light of Christ. As we study the letters of Paul, we have talked about the structure and the shape of Paul's letters. We have learned that oftentimes, Paul outlines his letters and he covers three things. Those three things that Paul covers in his outline is sin, salvation, and service. And we see that right here in verse number eight. If you will, go with me to verse number eight. Verse number eight, Paul says, you were once in darkness. Darkness represents sin and death. Then he says, but now you are in the light, which represents one's salvation. And then he says, so live as children of light, which points to one's reasonable service. In other words, Paul is encouraging them and he is instructing the people of God to live like God. He says, live in the light of Christ. In other words, live in a Christ-like manner. Paul, in a broad sense, he also covers the past life of a believer. He also covers the present life of a believer. And he also covers the future life mm, of the believer. It's still right in verse number eight, Paul says, Paul says that we were once in darkness. That's our past life. 
He says, but now, but now you are like, that's our what? Present life. And then he says, so live as children of light. That's our future life. Once we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, we are to live in the light of Christ. We are to live as children of light. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2 says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passion, desires, and the inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy. Anybody here thankful for God's mercy? God, he is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though, oh my God, we were dead because of our sins, he gave his life when he raised Christ from the dead. Understand today that it's only by God's grace that you and I have been saved. And so now, now that we are saved, we are to be imitators of Christ and we are to walk in love and we are to live as children of the light. Paul, there in Ephesians chapter four, Paul writes to the Ephesians and he tells them to walk worthy of the call. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In other words, let your behavior reflect the light of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Let your life reflect huh, the light of Christ. Verse 9 says, for the fruit of the light consists of goodness, righteousness, and what? I heard it. What? And truth. Let the fruit of the light consist of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Understand today that as children of the light, we should produce mm, the fruit of the light. A, a, a life in Christ, here it is, is a changed life. Yeah. A life in Christ is a changed life. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And Paul, he takes the time to contrast the difference between a life of darkness and a life lived in the light. I've already stated that darkness represents what? Sin and death. Yet the light is Christ. 
which provides life and produces goodness, righteousness, and what? Truth. Verse 10, Paul continues to instruct the Ephesians by telling them to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. And the only way we can find out what is pleasing to the Lord is by studying the word of God, staying in the word of God, and being obedient to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. He also tells them to have no fellowship. Have no fellowship with and do not participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose it. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Verse 13 says, everything. Mm. Everything exposed by the light is made visible. There in John chapter 3, verses 19 through 20, it says, and this is the judgment. Mm. The light has come into the world. And the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works are evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. Understand today that, 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 that people of darkness, mm, they love the dark because they don't want anyone to see what they do in the dark. But I'm reminded of a saying that I used to hear as I grew up as a little boy. And that saying was that what you do in the dark, my God, it will come to the light. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what you do in the dark, it will come to the light. Verse 14 says, for what makes everything visible is what? Light. Y'all can talk back to me. Talk back to me if you can. Yeah. For what makes everything visible is light. Therefore, it is said, get up, sleeper. Wake up, oh sleeper. Rise up from the dead and Christ will shine on you. In other words, Paul is saying to the people, come out of the darkness mm, into the light. Come out of the darkness into the light. One hymnologist, he says it like this, walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us, both day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. 
How many of you this morning believe that Jesus is the light of the world? Jesus is the light of the world. Walk in the light, the beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us, my Lord, both day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's something to share today. We ought to go out the, the, this very day and tell everybody that Jesus is what? Of the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. John, John 3.21 says, but whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Yeah, yeah. Live a life. Live a life in the light of Christ. Paul is letting the Ephesians know that as children of God, they are to imitate God, walking in love, Walking in the light of Christ and walking in the wisdom of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And so I encourage you today. I encourage you today that as believers to let your life reflect mm, the light of Christ. As obedient children, put off the old man. And put on the new man. Be imitators of God. Walking in love. Walking in the light of Christ. And walking in the wisdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. As I get ready to take my seat and as we get ready to move into the next session of the service. I've said it before at the beginning, but I think it is valuable enough to repeat. That as children of God. We are to live like God. We are to be imitators of our Father. We are to walk in love. Walk in the light of Christ. And walk in the wisdom of our Lord and Savior. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.